All right, we are live. Cool. You there? Yep, I'm there. All right. So, um, what's up, guys? My name is Marquisa, and I got, I'm talking to Ibrahim today, one of my good friends. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about basically some college. Is that is that worth it? Is college what it is made out to be? And should you go to college or should you not go to college? That's something that I wanted to talk to you about with Ibrahim. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about like what what's your situation? Like, how are you are you going? Where are you going to college? Stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, thank you for having me on. <laughs> That's yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, I currently go to DePaul University here in Chicago. Um, I've been going to public schools here my whole life in CPS. So it's that 14, 15 years since kindergarten all the way to high school. And then I stayed home in state in Chicago and got the opportunity to go to DePaul University and decided to go there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's currently I'm, I'm majoring in marketing sales. I'm about to be a sophomore next year. And yeah, I'm, I'm just, Sophomore right now out of Paul. So that's the root of my story. Okay. Makes sense. Cool. So um, for the people who watch this, um, what, how did you decide to go there? Like before you started to go to college or choose a college or whatever? Yeah, I mean, for me, actually, like I was more on just trying to see if I can get good scholarships to pay for college, you know, um, I, I was, thankfully, I was in a good academic program in high school, and my grades were good. I, I had a pretty, you know, decent um, high school career in terms of doing things outside of extracurricular, extracurricular activities. Like, I mean, I mean, academic activities, so sports teams, different clubs, and that nature. Um, and so I try to make sure my high school career was able to stand out for colleges and stuff like that. And so my process was I just simply looked at the colleges that offered me good scholarships and the ones that were the most affordable for my family and myself we make sure to make that decision. Um, and so with that, you know, I, I, I did have a mind going into schools like Champaign and down in the University of Illinois. And I got a chance to visit a school and it was a good experience. I got a chance to meet some really cool advisors and people, you know, from the school, they got good connections with them. And, uh, you know, I, I was, I almost think about going there. A lot of people in my, my high school class got good, really good scholarships to go there and, um, I, I actually got accepted to go to University of Champaign at U of I, but when we broke down the numbers financially, it just wasn't the best option, and you know it just turned out that it wasn't something that I shouldn't to go f go four years for because with all the debt that was out. Of, you know, how much? How much was that for for that school? So they said on average I was supposed to pay after my four years twenty thousand, <laughs> but but after just the first year, the first year cost me twenty thousand which was surprising to a lot of the advisors that I talked to because a lot of my friends that were in school, they had really good scholarships to cover those four years and they were paying less than that, you know what I mean? So my first year alone was 20000 and that was, I figured, no, that wasn't worth to invest four years of spending twenty k for four years. So what school was I that again? That. U of I, University, University of Illinois, Champaign. Right. And um, yeah, so then... When it came to my other options for school, um, you know, I was like, again, looking at the best options. And then it turned out that, you know, I had a community college option to go to two years. There's, uh, in Chicago, we have this thing called the CCC, which is like all the state, uh, state funded schools that have like good scholarships. And I was offered to go for two years, like fully covered, like in the program they have. And I was thinking about doing that. And it was between the option between going to that community college or, DePaul University, which was one of my better, actually my better financial option for my family. And so it was, when we broke down numbers with the advisors over there, um, it turned out that if I were to go two years right away to community college, then I have to pay like, you know, like the full price for my last two years, my junior, senior year. And there was no guaranteed for like, you know, my scholarship that to be reimbursed and stuff like that. So and plus also with credits with community college, sometimes some credits don't transfer properly or, you know, I didn't want to have to deal with that right away. And so it was better to invest 
going four years straight to the Paul versus going two years and then having to pay like the full price in my last two years. You know what I mean? So yeah. I decided to go to the Paul those four years instead. And that's what I'm currently doing. And so that community college, which one was that? It was actually, uh, so I said like a product set part of the CCC. So it was Harold Washington that I was interested in going to. Okay. And a lot of my classmates in my high school did get a chance to get to that program and they went to that, the schools too. And what, what so, is that program exactly? So, yeah, so like there's different uh, city funded schools, I should say, city, not state, city funded schools that are like they offer like those scholarships and stuff like that and those opportunities for those like students, you know. And it just depends on the different tracks you want to go to. So, Harold Washington is known for their like more of their business programs and so more business heavy. And some other schools might specialize in like different fields that are like, you know, either in the sciences or liberal arts or anything else that, that they're specializing. But Harold Washington was. You know, you know, for me, I thought it was a better school business-wise. Okay. Yeah. And your your video, your video is kind of uh, messy here. Sorry. It's messy? Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, we'll, we'll check it. Yeah. After we're done. Um, okay. And then, so you decided you want to go to that DePaul school, right? Yeah. And... Tell me, like, how how did that? How was that process like getting set up there and stuff like that? Well, I mean, like I, you know, like honestly, like I didn't even enroll until like the last month of schools even started because, like, I, you know, I actually went on a family trip to my family's home country, and so we were out for a couple months, and then when we came back, like the decision to finally finalize that a uh, payment and all that was made but a month before I started school, so that once we talked to financial aid and we set up a payment plan to pay on a monthly basis, you know, what we, what we agreed to. Then I was able to schedule myself into orientation. And then from there, payment plan went through. And then I started school in fall. And then the rest is history. From there, I just had a whole school year. Okay. Yeah. And how do they, like, how did that payment plan meeting, like, go? Like, what was that? How was that? It was, it was really good because they broke down like exactly what we have to pay for the year and how we can pay. So, you know, like, you know, the, we chose an option. <laughs> no, not, not that. I mean, we do have like a, like a, like we, we did set up like an automatic like payment transfer through my, like my parents. Like I said, my parents and I were able to help you pay off for that. So we set up like an automatic like transfer for like payments. So we set up like an automatic payment fee per month basis. And then that's how we, organize the payment so okay and do you did is that payment then cover that one year or yeah did, yeah, did yeah. They, so, so yeah exactly so how does that, that payment was for this year so based on the grants and scholarships i got for that year i was able to then cover off whatever this year and so i got to do the same thing for my next year so once i talk to financial aid and once i set that up again then we'll see what the payment's going to be for next year. And so it goes, yeah, by year to year basis that's covered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so they don't bill you up front. No, 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 no. It's broken down. So they, so you do year by year. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so you were doing marketing and what else was that? Marketing? It's, like, uh, it's marketing sales. Like they have like a sales concentration okay. that I'm part of. And what, what kind of classes were you taking there? So I, I took some of my general ed classes. So some of like my scientists. So I took like this anthropology class, you know, um, I took like this global studies class and then I took some business classes like um, marketing, just basic marketing 301. Uh, the sales class I took marketing sales fundamentals, which is, Typically for like, you know, I could take it later in my years, but you know, I, I, I want to take it earlier. So I took it earlier then. And I took, um, like, uh, microeconomics, uh, business calculus and you know, the rest, rest, rest were mostly like some general eds here and there. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a mix between like business classes and then like some general ed stuff. And how many classes do you have to take there? Per year so it's a quarter system so we take like four classes per quarter and there's three quarters so fall winter spring 
and so I took I take four four classes for a quarter. Okay, so I never I never heard of that. Yeah. And what? How does that work? Like, how does that? So after every two months, you're taking an exam, or after every three months, or how's that? How's that work? So like, yeah. So we it's it, the classes go by ten weeks. So like the first five weeks, you have like you know your introduction, all that, and then by like the fifth sixth week, you have your midterm, and then like by the last few weeks, you have your final. And then once you have your final, you get all your grades settled, and all, all the classes finished, then you can um, uh, then you can apply yourself for the next quarter classes. So, for example, fall and starts like in September and ends like around, let's say, um, like November, right? November. And then once we, when we finish that, then you can apply for your winter quarter classes. And then you know you apply your winter quarter. And so you said it's ten weeks each. Yeah, class, ten week, ten week quarters. Yep. Yeah. And how how long or how short uh, are those classes? So some classes it varies. So like um, some classes, if you take like a night class that's like three hours long, then you might take like that class maybe once a week. So three to four hours depending for one class. But then it's usually breaking down like you take like two classes that same two classes within a day within a week. So that'll be like an hour and a half usually like an hour hour and a half depending on. The length of the class. So, the topic you, of so you have the same class twice a week. Twice a week, yep. So you have, let's say, you have four classes every uh, quarter, uh -huh. and you have those four classes twice a week. Yep. So eight classes a week. No, 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 no. Well, hold on here. Yeah, I mean. Well, it depends if you have those yeah. night classes and everything, right? Yeah, but you're taking four classes total, and it just, yeah, every other day, it's like you take, for example, if I have a Monday class, two classes, the same Monday, Wednesday, those two same classes, and then thir Tuesday, Thursday, those two other classes. So, so yeah. So, the, what, are the, what are the, like, ranges, like, two to four hours, or what is the range there? So, usually, it's like, like some classes are, like, an hour, you know, typically, it's, like, an hour long, hour 30 sometimes. Uh, depending on the class, so if, if it's like a lab component, you may have to stay a little bit longer, like an hour or two, like an hour usually. But um, okay, yeah, so let's say it's an hour thirty. Mm -hmm. So that's like, what is that? Two uh, three hours, six hours per class per week, right? Let's see. Yeah, that that sounds right. Yeah. So six hours for ten weeks. That's then sixty hours. Yeah. So so for example, like I have like a class that's like from like let's say ten fifty to eleven twenty, and then eleven twenty to like one twenty or something like that, like one. And so. So do you? So you get you get a price then also per class, right? Price per class? Yeah. Well, usually, I think if you take an extra class, you charge more. But like, I believe the quarter system only like you pay for only that entire four set for that entire quarter. So if you're taking less classes, I don't know how that's going to affect the payment. Um, but I know that if you take a more if you take an additional class, yeah, you do have to pay more. And what's the payment there for that? I'm not sure because I'm you know I, I don't know what that's about, but I'm pretty sure it's like another. A grand or so extra but it just i don't know like, but what's your payment like for for the for the quarter or for the year it's it's so like i said we have a monthly payment for that specific quarter so we then we pay off that quarter once every month goes by and then once that um that quarter is done then you pay that next quarter you know what i mean but it's all within the same year so it's you know it breaks up for the entire year Okay, and how much do you pay that for that? So, for quarter, so roughly, so we pay total like around eight thousand this year, just for like. And is that does that include like, what does that include? So that that, that just includes like just the payment for the entire year. That, that does not include like my student loans that I took out. So technically, I'm paying twelve thousand for the year, but like we took out my I took out like my four thousand out of it. 
or five thousand five hundred out of it, and then the rest is paid off. And is that? Did you get any scholarships on that, or no? I did get some good scholarships. Um, actually, because I'm not living in dorms, I'm not having to pay an extra ten k. Because living on dorm is like another ten k, and I did get some grants and some scholarships from the school to cover most of it. But um, I still got like I said, I paid a little bit of the eight thousand for that year, for example. Okay. So, for the year, right? For the year. Yeah. Okay. And that's not including me paying back my loans. So, just eight thousand for now. Yeah, roughly eight thousand. So like around eight hundred, a little bit less than eight hundred bucks per class. Yes, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I can't really tell you the exact numbers on that, but yeah, it's that sounds about right. Yeah, if you take then eight thousand divided by the twelve classes, right? That's less than eight hundred bucks. So eight hundred bucks per class, and then. It's only 60 hours per, or no, sorry, six hours per week. Typically, yeah. For 10 weeks. Yeah. That's just one quarter. So it's about like 40 bucks per class. Give or take. Give yeah. or take, yeah. Okay. So, like, I think that. From my point of view, I think that college and everything, that university and whatever you want to call it, um, is a little bit overrated. And I think that sometimes people are getting the short end of the stick, right? They're paying so much money and they end up d having a degree with nothing or minimal worth. And... That's what I wanted to ask you. Like, is that something that you think also, or is that something that? Yeah, yeah I, I do agree with that. I think, yeah, like it's the, the thing I don't like to me personally when it comes to like college is like it's the mindset that oh, I'm going to college to get this job one day, right? Like, it's like, okay, I'm going to go four years so I can get this job, right? And, it, and, the, and the truth of the market is, you know, from my research and studies, they're saying that, you know, you're not going to have the same, there is no like, Guaranteed career for 40 years. It's like you're going to probably change your career like seven, eight times in your lifetime. So I, I, I think it's just like you're going to school to get a job. I don't think that's the right mindset. Like you should go to school because you want to learn something. You want to actually become a better student, a better thinker, a better person even if possible. That's how I kind of want to approach it. Not just, oh, I'm going to go here for four years and hope I can get some job after it, you know. So I do agree with that. That it's like. Do you think that, do you, think that you could get a job without a degree? Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely. You know, I, I even encourage if like, if you have a job, a dream job in mind, let's say for young, you should go and contact that job and say, Hey, I love your company or something. And just, you know, work your way up from that. If that makes sense. You know, if that means doing like, I don't know, maintenance work or just anything small task and then work your way up. If you know what job you want to have, you should do something like that. Otherwise, if you're just hoping that something happens, you know, it's like you have to, you know, it's going to be tougher, but yeah, I mean, that's just yeah. how I see. Yeah, I think that's that too. Like, I think that if you work before or like, I mean, work right after you finish high school or something, then I think it's, you have a better success rate than if you go to college first and then you go to college for four years, whatever, five years, and right. then you start to look for a job. Yeah. You know, like, I think if you take someone who didn't have college, right? And you take someone who, who is in college, that person who is not in college maybe has an advantage because they can like first do those jobs that are maybe a little bit shittier and then move forward to like a better job in two, three years. Right. 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 Yeah. But when you're done with college, then, I mean, you do have some sort of paper that says you did something that's awesome, but like what happens when, you know, they say, okay, we need experience. Then you have zero experience. Yeah. You know, and that's also a big thing. Like if you have zero experience, that's also like, okay, I don't know how this person is in a certain environment. So why would I hire them? You know? Right. I mean, the one thing I will say about my school, cause you know, this is based on the experiences I've had. 
a lot of people in my school do work like outside of school like they have like either like a nine to five job or um they're doing some kind of like whatever kind of work within school and that's you know i've, I've had conversation with some friends and then like that's kind of like not many people have like that many schools that kids go to work and school at the same time but i mean again it just varies in school it varies on what's going on um, i can't speak on behalf of all colleges in america for example but you know it just i know that for you know for people i've talked to they said they know a lot of friends who have jobs and then they also go to school and that's a common thing so okay but, yeah 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 i just don't know i just think it's so weird because like i think it's just so overpriced right because like you can get so much information like from online or you can buy a course right online yeah. you can go like to some maybe even like a community college or whatever and i think that's maybe sometimes even better because then you can learn that specific thing right and right. i don't know like i think that i would if i if i'm not as informed you know and i would like to like do college i would test and try out something like before i jump into it you know what i mean yeah like i i would recommend taking one year off after you finish high school or something and then really see like okay do i want to want to go to college or is this someone just forcing me to go to college you know is my parents just saying yeah let's let me go to college cuz i want to make my parents happy or let me go to college because I want to show my friends that I'm not stupid or whatever. And I don't know if that's the right mentality like to have yeah. after you finish, like, let's say high school. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's some people I even, I mean, I'm like, I don't know personally, but I've heard stories like that. People like friends of friends, whatever that might say, Oh, I, I know a person that dropped out or they're taking a gap year. That's what it's called. That one year, like a gap year. So they just kind of like, either to spend a whole year just working or just doing other things. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I do think that's great. If you, if you want to like, if you want to kind of just take a break, go travel or just go, um, you know, try other things then you should do that and then see what works for you in that regards. But yeah, I think that pressure from family, from peers, from even just society in general, it's like, you know, I think that is overwhelming for a lot of people and it shouldn't be like that, but it's just how it is. Unfortunately, you know, I saw a great video. It's like, um, and it's one time I actually had a, like a class discussion in one of my classes. And you know, I was saying like, you know, there's no law that says between the ages of 18 and 22, you have to be in college. Like that's just, you know, that's just more like a social pressure kind of thing. But yeah. again, like if you feel like that's the thing you have to do and it, it makes sense to you to do it, then do it. If not, then you have to, you know, do things that work, you know, but it's easier said than done, of course. Yeah. I just think it's like that, um, like high school, like when you're finished with high school, like I was there and I know, um, how that is. And, um, I just think that people are not ready for, for like to pay that amount of money. You know what I mean? Like they don't, they can't comprehend that, that that's a lot of money. And if I don't pay that, then it's going to stay with me and it's just going to get higher and higher and higher. And it's always going to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that's something that you shouldn't want to willingly say, yeah, let me put my, you know, hand in that because it's going to burn you. Right. And, and that's kind of the main reason why I wasn't super like, oh, let's go and do this right away. I kind of want to measure, measure out you know, options like that. And then I just did a decision that made sense, more, more sense in that regards, in terms of like picking schools and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, how was that process for you? Like, so like, like what kind of things were you seeing in your high school? I don't know if you, you know, have any memories of that, like direct memories, but like what, what kind of things do you recall from high school? Yeah. I mean, like I, I had a little bit different, right. Because I was playing basketball and stuff, but I mean, everyone was like, you know, Oh, which college are you going to, which college is that, you know, Yeah. let's go here together or let's go there. You know, it's like, um, I think everyone has that, right. And, yeah. and every school and even the schools, right. They like train you basically to go to college. Right. Yeah, that's true. So they're always putting that in your head. Right. So, oh, you got to get good, great grades and you got to be this 
type of student. You got to do like volunteer work. You got to do all this shit. And it's like, you know, is it, is that really like necessary or, or are they just like, you know, like, I think that's what high school is like from ninth grade to like 12th grade. That's just like a pre-college, you know, it's like a, yeah, you're getting a little bit of a pre-college taste. But in college is way different because no one cares like who you are or what's your name, you know. Yeah. In high school, it's it's, it's still uh, decent, you know. <laughs> they still care about you. They still know your name. And in university or college, whatever you want to call it, it's that's gone. You know, you're just like a number, especially by like a bigger school like like DePaul or something. Then they're gonna be like, oh, this is this guy or whatever and yeah it keeps going and yeah and kind of with that i think i think it's important for people that who are going to college right it's important to try to make sure you you, you kind of do get in contact with like either faculty or staff or people that can you can like network with or get in contact with so that way you, you, you could build a relationship beyond just school and like in a class so but it's you know it's you know it's it's up to you to do that you know what i mean it's not something that you have to do but it helps going forward you know and do you think like like all of those people are, let's say, good teachers or professors, or is there some people who are shit, or some people who are, who are nice, or how is that? Well, for me, for me generally, I've ha I've had good professors. I'm not gonna lie and say I haven't had I've had some professors here and there that weren't always the best, but generally I've I've had good professors, people who are like you know passionate with the, within a specific uh, field, and you know it does make the class interesting and it makes learning more interesting when. Someone is dedicated to a specific field or craft, and it's like you can learn from them, ask them specific questions about that specific field or any kind of question you want to ask about that subject, and they can give you that feedback because they have that experience. So I've, I've, had, I've had many of those so far in my experiences, and I hope that happens going forward. But, you know, it just varies on people you take and classes you take. And, like, let's say, let's fast forward a little bit, right? You're finished yeah. with your college you have your, let's say, diploma or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And what are you, what are you going to do next then? What do you want to do next? Well, I mean, what the ideal thing people do is they get a job, right? They try to get a job, some employment somewhere. But, you know, of course, I want to try to be able to get some employment while I'm in school. You know, like I said, just trying to network and meet these people and just learn as much as I can in and outside the classroom. So whether it be going at events or going to some, you know, you know, some kind of seminars, whatever, just, I try to make that process in between my years, uh, you know, so that way I can try to prepare something before I graduate, you know what I mean? Or even after graduation, so. Okay. I can't speak on behalf of everyone again, I mean, it's, it's that's what I, I'm trying to do, but, um, yeah, I mean. And what, is it, like, a possibility if, for you, like, to be like, oh, I'm not going to finish it, or is that something that you are not going to do? Well, I mean, if, if, let's say, for example, I'm, you know, I saw like a business or like I'm doing some job that's, you know, taking most of my time and focus and energy and I feel like this is what I have to do. I think I, I should maximize my ability to do that specific job or whatever business that I'm doing. And if I feel like that my focus is more towards that, then I will see if that's the right move to go and kind of put school to the side and finish it later. Or if, you know, I feel like, okay, you know, I can do both at the same time and just try to manage as much best as I can, you know try to put in, make sure I get the school finished and make sure I can do my other efforts too. Let's say a project or business or part of a team or company. So yeah, that's how I see it. Okay. And what if you, um, like you said, you want to meet, like meet a lot of people and get to know like the professors and all that stuff. And, what, like, what kind of stuff can you, like, get from that? You know what I mean? Like, is there some benefit from that? Or is that just, like, just do it because it's something that it's nice to do? I can't hear you. Just say. You're, uh, you cut.
Can you turn mute, mute your mic and then turn it back on? Can you hear me? Try it. Try calling back. Let's see if that works. Yeah, for some reason he didn't. Uh, his mic just stopped working, so I'm just gonna wait for him to call back. Can you hear me? No. Nah. Uh -huh. Can you hear me now? Can you take out your headphones? Try taking out your headphones. Can you hear me now? Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Can you plug it Please? in? Try plug it in. Let me try again, yeah. One second. Ah, so that's working, but the headphones weird. Go again? Do you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. Cool. Yeah, so like, you know, I mean, if I know a professor a specific skill, let's say they have either some experience in some company or industry, and I know they, you know, they have, you know, they've built that throughout the entire career. If I have some tips I want to ask them or like some specific knowledge in a certain area, I could definitely ask them, oh, how does this work? Why does this work a certain way? You know, see, like, is there any kind of, you know, either fields or opportunities I can look at that's focused on the specific skill or specific thing I want to ask or like, uh, like a specific, um, what's it called? Like, um, like market or anything I want to look at that, that has, that they have expertise and say they know somebody or they are familiar with certain like, companies or fields or whatever that I can explore and see what they have to offer and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Um, so. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm someone, I'm not someone that's <laughs> trying to be negative or something, but yeah, I, uh, in the recent, I don't know, it's just in the recent years, like, I don't know if that's like the right, the right thing for, for, uh, the younger people like growing up and stuff like that. Right. Right. And then I'll, I'll say one thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'll say one thing. If, if you're given an opportunity, let's say you get a good scholarship or you, you get, you know, good coverage for going to school, I'll say, go out and see and see for yourself what you like about it, you know? And try to make the most out of the, that, those experiences. Try to meet people. Try to go to events. Try to see what's going on in campus or within a school, and make the most out of that experience. And if you see that it's good for you, you know, I'll, it's up to you to continue. And if not, again, you you have the option to what makes more sense to you. But don't, you know, don't just do it because you have to do it or society. Just do it because you feel there's some merit to it. There's some opportunities there to grow from it. You know. And, yeah, that's 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 true. Like I think that same thing because. Um, I, I know when I, I was only at a uh, university for one year in Canada and the only thing that like I got from that was I met people and I understood like a little bit, okay, this is how it works when you're living by yourself and you know, you got to pay rent, you got to buy your food, you got to do your laundry, you got to do this stuff. And that yeah. stuff was like, cool you know that's something that i think is important for everyone to experience yeah but um you know and if you can get that scholarship or whatever and reduce that cost then i would definitely say it's worth it right if you can get it for free that's even better yeah, but, that's right. but um like over like i would say over like i would even say five thousand like bucks a year is, is a lot yeah. for that because it's like, you told me like, it's like one, one and a half hours, you know, and it, it should be that much. Like it should be cheaper. Like yeah. as you go up, you know what I mean? Like the most expensive schooling should actually be the, the kindergarten and like the baby, uh, section, <laughs> you know? Yeah, because those people are those people are working the hardest and they're getting paid the least. You know, like the professors are working get that from uh, universities are getting paid the most and they do like the least amount of work. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the thing too is, in my school, there are a lot of like there's some tenor prof let's call it tenure professors. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. But a lot of my school has a lot of um, 
what what's the term? Uh, they're like associate professors, so they're, they're like they're not full time. They don't they're like consider like full time staff. You know, they're just there, and you know, yeah, they're and, able to and that's I think something that is also pretty crappy because then you're just getting like the professors there half the time, and you know they're not into it like as they should be because they're only working half time or whatever and. Yeah, I just don't get that because like they're getting so much money. I don't know what, how they're how they're fucking not paying those people like full time. I don't get it. And again, it just varies on a professor. Like I've had so far, the professors I've had that are considered like part time are some of like my favorite professors I've had. And you know, it just varies on a professor. I guess you know it doesn't guarantee anything. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all in all, I think that. If is it is it worth it? I would say, right now at the moment, I would say no. But if you can get it for free, if you can get it like at a discounted rate, um, definitely I would say do it because yeah. then uh, and also like live there, you know, take that extra um, money or whatever you want and live at that place because it's gonna give you some sort of experience, you know. Right. Instead of like, you know, you just, just going to class like what most people do because they can't afford, they can't even afford the classes. So how are they going to afford staying there? Right. And, um, I think that's, that's crazy because it's about life. You know, it's not about the class. Yeah. But what do you think? No, it's true. I mean, it's, you know, again, it's how you make the most out of it and, you know, if you, you know, if you know what you want, if you not, and not even know what you want, if you just, you make the decision that makes the most sense to you, that's my kind of my main, main thing. If you make the decision that makes the most sense to you, then you should make those decisions. But <clears throat> other than that, don't, you know, don't just do it because you have to. Yeah. All right. I think that, um, I don't have anything else. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that, uh, that's pretty clear and yeah. Again, thanks for the for the call. Thanks for the live. Yeah, man. Thank you for the invite. And um, we'll talk soon. Sounds great, man. See you. See you.